Garnett coming to you live from the Garner campus of Moorhead Studios. I hope everybody has had a great holiday weekend. Um, judging by the camera, it's about time for me to shave, kids. Getting awful fuzzy. So at any rate, we're going to start. We're going to start with Catherine the Great today. Now, the last thing that we covered was Peter the Great. Peter the Great was the Czar of Russia. Remember, Czar stands for Caesar. Um, there is this fascination with Russia and the Roman Empire, but they're a bit of a knockoff. Okay, they're not the Roman Empire, advanced Roman Empire that we think of. Uh, Peter the Great has caught them up. We've got two words, westernization and modernization. He is modernizing them. So great ruler, probably not that great of a father. Now, one of the things that is strange about Peter the Great is he was fascinated with succession. So who takes his place? Who is going to be the heir? Who is next? Who is next? Who is next? And remember, he actually killed his own son. He had him tortured to death. All right. So nonetheless, he's fascinated with all of this succession. Who's next? Who's next? But he never actually says who's next. And that's going to create a little bit of an issue. So there is going to be a lot of fighting, a lot of arguments. I will save you the story on those. But eventually, his daughter Elizabeth is going to take the throne. She is going to be the Tsarina. Some people say Tsaris. But um, more than likely, if you're reading it or watching a YouTube video, it's going to say Tsarina. All right. So at any rate, she is in charge and she is going to try to eliminate immediately all of these problems that they had with secession. Okay. Succession. That is, again, where somebody takes your spot. So she immediately names her nephew. She names her nephew, Peter III as her successor. That's who is going to take the throne. And she is going to spend a lot of her time trying to make sure everything goes smoothly and that he has a wife. Now we are going to move on to the next part of our story. So we're gonna stop there. We're gonna to go to Germany. Now at this period in history, Germany did not exist as one single solitary country. There's a whole bunch of kingdoms. And when you have a whole bunch of kingdoms, you have a whole bunch of different royalty. There is a minor group of royals, okay? Minor group of royals, um, a very minor princess, and her name is Sophie. Sophie has a bit of a sad life to begin with because mom is fascinated with royalty. Sophie's mom is fascinated with royalty, and her big deal, mom's big deal, is to try to marry Sophie off so that it makes her, not Sophie, but it makes mom feel like more royal, more important. So Sophie only got attention. She only got attention in that it was uh, for her to become royalty, all right? And how is she going to help the mom? This, this is pretty much proven because Sophie had an older brother and mom did the same thing with that brother. She didn't pay Sophie any attention, but the brother died. When the brother dies, then Sophie gets all the attention and she's starting to move her around. So mom is trying to kind of like using her kids to get ahead. So mom is shopping Sophie around and there is a meeting with Elizabeth and there is an agreement that Sophie is going to marry Peter III. Now they're both relatively young, teenage years, um, but this process is going to start. Now, I want you to picture that you are Sophie. You are approached by mom and saying, hey, you're going to move the, about the same distance as um, North Carolina to almost California. You're gonna move to a completely different climate. You're gonna move to where they have a different language. Not only do they have a different language, but we don't use the same alphabets. So it's gonna be difficult for you to even recognize the letters. Oh, and they have a different religion and Kicker, you've never meet the, met these people, so so long, daughter. Uh, good luck. Like, Sophie hears all this, and there's two ways you can approach things, and I really like the way that she approached this. One approach, and kids often take this approach with anything. They got too much homework. Oh, I can't do it. All right, I can't do this. I can't do that. Sophie said, I'm going to make the absolute best of this as I can. She stayed up each night until the candles in her room were completely burnt down. Can't, they won't burn anymore. And she learned Russian. It's one of the more difficult languages on the planet to learn. She learned it, all right? Next, 
she's going to switch her religion. Now, both countries are Christian, but we have like a Protestant type Christianity in Germany, and we have an Orthodox. It's a very old type of Christianity in Russia. She switches to Orthodox. Sophie's going to go one step further. She's actually going to change her name. She changes it from Sophie to Catherine, a more Orthodox and more popular name within Russia. All right, so here we go. We have the minor noble. There is uh, a picture of Sophie. She was considered very, very beautiful, okay? Now, <clears throat> when she gets to Peter III, Peter III is a weirdo, all right? He is a bit of a weirdo. He's a bit of a weirdo bully, which I think are, are, are like the worst types of bullies and the worst types of weirdos. Um, P Peter at this point is now starting to get into late teens. He still plays with toys. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I showed you my Transformer collection. But no, like he really, like I don't get in the floor and make them shoot each other. All right. Um, like he really like still played with toys. And when he meets her, he's really mean to her. Now she's one of the most beautiful people on the planet. And uh, like he, he's not nice to her at all. Weirdly enough, he learns that she did all of this stuff to become more Russian and, and to become more uh, suitable for the marriage. And he says that he likes German culture more. Wish he wouldn't have done all that. He was fascinated with the military and Germany had like this Spartan-like military. So, so that interested him. Um, but again, he is just, Peter III does not treat her well. Now, Elizabeth recognizes this. She is the Tsarina. And as Sophie gets older, Sophie is in this strange country. Her husband doesn't treat her well. Sophie gets a little boyfriends, all right? Elizabeth finds out about this, okay? And she doesn't she really do anything about it. So Sophie actually has a little boyfriends, little boyfriends. So what happens next? We're going to have Elizabeth die. Now, Sophie realizes Elizabeth's kind of the only person keeping her alive. Her husband hates her. And once you see Elizabeth die, the husband gets even meaner with Sophie. So Sophie is starting to fear for her life a little bit. Now, interestingly enough, Sophie's boyfriend was the head of the palace guard. He is actually going to step up and protect Sophie. He removes Peter as the czar. Now, remember, this is almost unheard of in Russia. He removes him. And shortly afterward, we, we don't know exactly how this happened. There's a bunch of speculation, but Peter is found dead. So if you notice, and we go throughout history, whenever that happens, Sophie is only Tsarina by marriage, all right? She is only Tsarina by marriage. However, here she stays the Tsarina, and she will have this little boyfriends kind of on the side. They're, they're unofficial. And his name was Orloff. This is called the Orloff diamond. He gave her this diamond. It's one of the more famous and larger diamonds um, in history. So you can see this. All right. Now, um, she or, or Peter is dead, but they did have a child together. Okay. I'm going to go back a screen on that. The child's name is Paul. Okay. Now, as Sophie is ruling this new country, you gotta remember she is ruling Russia. She is not even from Russia. She made the absolute best of a horrible situation and now she's in charge of a country. You are going to see her kind of be the Henry VIII of the ladies. Now she doesn't have a whole bunch of husbands, she doesn't do that, but she's got a bunch of little boyfriends. And a big difference between her and Henry VIII, she didn't kill them. They tend to end amic amicably. I have a hard time saying that word. That means like they're friends, kind of. And every little boy friend she gets, all right, seems to be uh, good at one area of the empire that she needs help with. Now, you got to remember, Russia is the biggest country in the world. It's difficult to manage all this. One of her little boy friends is going to be the head of the military. One of her little boy friends is going to be really good with money. So she has all these little boyfriends, and she calls them her favorites, her favorites. And they help her rule this massive empire of a country she's not even from. All right? So here's some things that she does well. She's a very great administrator. And the next thing she does is she codifies law. 
Um, if you see the word code in there, Russia had a whole bunch of laws and they weren't written down. That's strange. Like, so could you imagine there's a speed limit, but it's not written down anywhere, doesn't say anything anywhere, but you get arrested for going over the speed limit and you're like, well, what's the speed limit? Well, it's 35, you should have known. Where does it say that? Uh, well, we just made that up. So that was a problem with Russia. So she puts Russian law into code. So there's actually law books, like people can read the law, which is significant. She's gonna keep modernizing Russia. She finishes Peter the Great's job. Now she does have to put down several rebellions, but she keeps Russia together. Now the boyfriend thing is going to come back and haunt her just a little bit. She is a great ruler, great story. Um, she is absolute, like we mentioned, and she, she did what she wanted and, and it advanced Russia. But as she got much older, and this happens to all of us, except for me, it hasn't happened to me yet, looks begin to fade, okay? You can't do what you once did, but she still likes having all these little favorites, okay? Now, one of her last favorites is 30 years younger than her. She's Robin, Robin the Cradle, okay? Now, this last guy, people would say, hey, he is up to no good. And she would do the, hey, don't tell me what to do. She would do that with them. And this guy is ripping Russia off. He is taking money from everywhere. And it's absolutely hurting the country. But she's not going to listen to anybody, all right? She's like, I will do what I want. And she is still thinking she is like much younger than what she really is, okay? Sometimes you get to a point where you just can't do certain things anymore. And uh, she, is, she is much older and, and she still has this idea that, that I haven't grown old, I'm young. And, and that kind of hurt her as well because she definitely didn't want to listen to anyone's reason. So this last little favorite um, destroys a lot of Russian finances. And she did not listen to that. Now, Catherine, very, very great ruler. She goes to the restroom one day and um, she doesn't kind of come out. The servant checks on her. And, and we believe that Catherine had some sort of stroke, maybe an aneurysm, uh, like a brain bleed, but she will die from that, okay? Now, great ruler not even from Russia. She made the best of what she had. She became this great Russian ruler. She codified law. She made uh, Russia much more modern, much more modern, and caught them up to the rest of the world. All right. I hope that you enjoyed this story 